much about story burning, That's so I, I kind of, and like all of these things you don't know about, you start researching it, and it's like, God, these people were interesting. Yeah. You know, like, what lives, you know? Okay. The sadomasochism, the alcoholism, you know, I mean, but, but just what they could write about, the scope of their imagination. Um, and he was like good friends with all the people that you would expect towards the end of the 19th century, the Rossettis and um, Oscar Wilde and, and, and so on. So he was very sort of um, fantasy, you know, very gorgeous with his golden locks. He also came up with a with a, a type of poem called a wrangle, which is a, technically has a, a specific structure that you probably hear. It rhymes in a particular way and it has a refrain. And um, this is the this is the bit where I was going to see whether we could uh, introduce some uh, audience participation. It's like, oh God. It's all right, that time. I can even count with another poem about a dead Republican. You know, like, I'm not audience participation, but um, okay, well, I'll leave it there. Um, anyway, it's called get, Getting a Roundel in for Mr. Swinburne. Is, <laughs> yeah, you're in the chair, Mike. <laughs> what, what, I, what I really liked, it, what I really liked about this is like he died in 72. He, <clears throat> He was rescued by his friend from certain death, alcoholism, the sadomasochism, <coughs> the drugs, you know, the general sort of dissipation. Um, Wikipedia says that he was rescued from his youthful rebellion by his friend who saved his life. He was rescued from his youthful rebellion, aged 42. <laughs> Which is pretty impressive, really, isn't it? You know? And anyway, he lived the, the last 30 years of his life in respectability. He was buried on the Isle of Wight in St. Bonnet's Church and, you know, unbecoming a pillar of society. But before that, he was, he was not, actually. Um, anyway, getting around to live for Mr. Swinburne. Oh, Algernon Swinburne, how long and lovely were your locks? That's what attracted you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, Elton Swinburne, how long and lovely were your locks, and though you were not tall, he was five foot four, which is a giant compared to John Keats, who was five foot two. Um, so although you were not tall or beautiful, you still could turn a head or two and grow to a square, or walking near the docks. Oh, Elton Swinburne. How we delighted in your naughtiness, your pre-modern poke and our pretended sensibilities. Oh, what shocks! The bottle and the birch, wicked ways topped off with auburn jauntiness. Alas, who was it killed the heterodox in you? A priest of Proserpine, the pale Galilean? But oh, how wild you were before the tyranny of clocks. Oh, Algernon, swim. <laughs> Very 